The facade pattern is used to create a simplified interface to a library, like an external dependency, or to a set of classes or modules, or even to an API. Let's take a look at what that means. The facade is like an empty shell. It, it is only an interface. It contains no logic itself. The only thing you're, you're doing in a facade is calling an implementation somewhere else. You're not implementing things yourself inside a facade. A facade sits between two pieces of code. There's some code that uses some other code. And instead of doing that directly, there's a facade in between. And that's really the core of it. And there's mainly two reasons why people do this. If you're using some code that is very complex, very annoying, very verbose, in some way you don't really like the interface that you have to use, you can fix that in a facade. If you put a facade in between there, you can build this shiny interface that you like and don't do any implementation, still use the original code that you're going to use. But now the some code that is using this facade has a nice time because it's only calling the nice interface that you built for yourself. And the second reason to use a facade is that you are using some code that you don't want to tight couple to. If you put a facade in between there, then you would couple yourself to the facade, something you control. I'll show an example later in this video on why this is useful. But as with everything, there's a cost to adding a facade. The cost is that of the added layer in your code base. It's more code to write, more code to test, and sometimes added complexity. But it doesn't always have to be the case. It can also lower complexity. Whether that's worth it is a case by case decision. Let's look at three examples to bring this idea to life. The first example I want to show you is that of a crypto facade. And this is about cryptography. It's not about cryptocurrency. Say you have a server-side app in which you need to encrypt some data. This can be a very common use case. And you found the web crypto API online, and this seems to be the thing you're looking for. It has what you need. You can encrypt, decrypt, you can do what you want with it. But the more you dive deep into this API, it is very complex and annoying to use. There's all these details that you need to learn, and this kind of turn out to be a lot of code to use from your perspective. It is not really code that is an implementation. It's not really logic, it's more configuration because it contains a lot of variables and data that are specific to how you want to do the cryptography. Now, I'm not trying to bash the Web Crypto API. It is serving its purpose, but it is a very uh, large set of primitives. It's very small detailed components that you have to know how to use. And if you just want to encrypt a string, then you still need a whole bunch of code to do that. And that is where the facade fits perfectly as a pattern, because you can create just the interface you want and put that code somewhere, like in this example, put it in a facade yourself, in a file where you would not feel the pain of having this code everywhere littered around your code base. You would have just the interface, which is just a function with just one argument to call. This is not implementing any logic. This is just creating an interface that's very nice to use. It's supposed to be very simple because it's only calling an implementation somewhere else. You're not doing any cryptography. The internals of the crypto API that you're using is, is doing the implementation. That's doing the cryptography. You're just using a library. Now, if you would need to call an even larger subsystem of multiple subcomponents and classes and modules and whatnot, the, the, the reason for using a facade would be even greater because your interface that you would have to call is even larger. Your code might be even more verbose. Example number two, dates and times. This is an example about an external dependency and where the facade comes into play. Let's assume you're using the moment.js dependency, either in the front end or in the back end or, or both. It, it's possible. Installed this a few years ago and it's been super nice to use. You've been using moment for all kinds of dates and times issues, maybe even the moment time zone library. But now you've noticed that moment itself has gotten deprecated. There was this thing going on a, a while back where we're basically saying this is not a modern JavaScript library anymore. Uh, the project is done. It's not dead, we're still maintaining it, but you know, we discourage Moment from being used in new projects. You may want to get rid of Moment. Right now, bugs are still being fixed. It's not a security risk yet, but this could change, especially if the other libraries start to pick up even more. So now you have this problem. And usually the first thing that comes to mind is to find a replacement library and to start refactoring, to start scheduling the refactoring maybe. The replacement libraries could be date functions or there's Luxon that is very nice. There is the temporal polyfill. All nice candidates. 
And once you've picked a replacement library, you can start refactoring, right? The new library has different function names, different interface, it has different arguments, different everything. So you need to update your code to match that. And if you're using moment.js in just one file, this problem seems to be easy. But if you're using it in multiple files, this is going to be a lot more work. If you're using it in hundreds of files, this is going to be a lot of refactoring that you need to do. And this is not just updating the import statements. No, the interface has changed. All the function calls that you're doing to moment will look different if you use date functions or Luxon or temporal. You need to change all that code. And now we can see that you have tight coupled yourself to moment.js. This is where the facade comes in. If you would have used the facade in between, then you would have chosen to tight couple yourself to the interface, to the facade itself and not to the library behind it. And since all those files that are using the facade are not coupled to moment.js, switching out moment.js would not be updating all those files. It would be only updating the facade itself. And that's a huge win. Now remember, the facade is an empty shell. It's just the interface. You're just calling the implementation somewhere else. So you won't have to change a lot of code there either. Example number three, resizing videos. Imagine you have a web app where you want to add the capability of showing videos to users. Imagine that once a video has been uploaded, it needs to be resized, it needs to be converted to different formats so that it can be viewed by all kinds of users with different devices and screen sizes and browsers and whatnot. But you're not an expert in resizing videos right now. You're a bunch of developers that are building a web shop. You're selling physical products right now. You have search, you have product pages, you have a checkout form. That's what you've been building so far. And those video how-tos that you want on the side are a nice to have feature. It's not something that you make money with. Video resizing is not your core business. Given this context, do you really want to start owning the difficult and expensive problem of resizing videos as an engineering team? Is that a wise thing to do? It may be a good decision to buy this capability instead of developing it yourself. Let's assume that after a selection process, you have selected a company that does video processing as a service. Great. Now it's just a matter of starting to call their API, right? This is again where the facade comes in. If you decide to directly call this vendor from one or multiple places in your code, you directly start calling their API, you're slowly locking yourself into this one vendor. If this vendor decides to raise prices, move to another country, or it goes bankrupt, or the service becomes too slow for what you need, then you have a very big problem. It's now very difficult and very expensive to switch to another. You need to rewrite or refactor a lot of code to make this happen. If you would have a facade in between, then your code base is not directly depending on this vendor specific API. This company has developed an API themselves probably that isn't standard. It doesn't quickly allow you to switch to another company to its competitor. This company would not have any benefit from you being able to easily switch to other companies. If you would have this facade, then you would now need to only change the facade if you ever want to switch to another company. Your code is not depending on the video resize API. Your code is only depending on the facade. This change is then a lot easier and a lot cheaper. You're effectively sidestepping the vendor lock-in to some extent, because it has a cost to add this layer, of course. And that's it. I hope you liked it. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments what you think and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thank you very much for watching.